Well, I'm not sure what the easiest way to do questions would be, but if, you, or if you're open to it. Questions? Yes. You have them there? I have a few here, and then we'll oh. open it up to the audience, however you like. One, one question I wanted to ask was if you could talk about your experience with Original, uh, the Stockhausen, and why was yeah. Fist Fight its length? Well, um, how was it presented? Carl Heinz Stockhausen um, put together that composition. I got to know him before uh, he came, before he proposed to do that in New York City. And uh, so uh, he actually didn't participate in the production of this thing. It was uptown in uh, 57th Street in one of. Uh, I forget where, but anyhow, it was theater in the round, and uh, I participated as a, in the credits as a filmmaker, and uh, the other people you saw in there, Nam June Pike, who was bending over doing something, anyhow, a whole bunch of artists were invited by uh, Carl Heinz to do something. That film that you saw, um, was projected uh, halfway through the this uh, happening, I guess is how you describe it. Things going on simultaneously with theater in the round. And uh, so my participation was was that film. Uh, it was projected on a screen in, in uh, Judson Hall in New York. Anyhow, it was a small arena and uh, so during the projection of the film, everybody laid down, all the other actors, and I walked over them from the projector with a, carrying a screen. And I held it up to the image, and then I walked back to the projector with that image over these bodies, and the image disappeared into the projector. When you look at it like this, it's twice as long as it was there because of this action that I had. So it always bothers me a little bit that it's, it's longer than it should be, or than most of my films. Anyhow, that was uh, that. Was that. I, I, I can't remember the press reactions <laughs> to that event. Maybe he was wise to stay away. Stockhausen was a very difficult person, uh, enormous ego, and uh, intense. Uh, person. Uh, I, I was lucky to have any rapport with him at all. I did. I don't know. How, how did you meet him originally then? How did? You meet him originally? How I met him? Mm -hmm. Oh, did I tell you this? I, I, uh, I was in a gallery in New York, the Bonino Gallery, uh, and among the other artists there, uh, and I'm I have a terrible affliction and name forgetting, but anyhow, a dear friend, uh, artist, German artist who became Stockhausen's wife at one point. Anyhow, she connected me with him, and they came out to uh, where we were living uh, outside of New York. And uh, uh, he said it was Mary Bauer. Uh, yeah, Mary Baumeister. Yeah, I'll forget your name. That's okay. I have. Uh, I was never married no, to Stockhausen, though. So. <laughs> uh, yeah, Mary Baumeister. And uh, they had a very intense romance. Uh, at one point, meeting each other on the top of a mountain, having climbed from opposite sides. <laughs> very romantic. <laughs> and was Fist Fight something you created for? Originality, or was it something you were already working on? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to remember Fist Fight. What, what was was that, that the one for the Originale? Yeah. The what? film for the Originale. Fist Fight. Fist Fight. For? For uh, Originale. Oh, Originale. Yeah, Originale. Yeah. Oh, was that something I was already doing? Yeah. yeah I, I guess that it was underway, and I just added the uh, titles, um, such as they were, and those little snapshots at the beginning. But, you know, I, I'm not a very efficient filmmaker. I should have had names and everything else there. But it, since it was meant, to, um, he urged me to do whatever I wanted to do, so. 
That's what I did. But uh, yeah, I had the film already underway, and I added the beginning stuff. And then, uh, as I say, I prolonged it um, so that we could do this little stunt in the theater. And how did you decide to get into filmmaking? Uh, well, I'm. Uh, how did I do that? I, uh, age 10, I was sent to art school in Detroit downtown because I could draw a straight line and my father had to do it this way. He was an engineer, but he had some idea that maybe I could, that I should study art. So that's when I started drawing and uh, making art things. So uh, that evolved into painting, finally. Uh, I had a GI Bill and I went to Europe on that. And, and uh, hooked up with uh, very quickly, that's 1949, uh, the, uh, I discovered abstract art. I had already been inspired by uh, Kandinsky and Clay and uh, who else? Anyhow, I'd seen some things in my last year at college, I was thrown out of my figurative art classes. <laughs> and given a studio to, if I was going to do abstract art, that was against the the art department and the, at that stage they were involved in <coughs> social realism. So, uh, so when I went to Europe, I was already starting to become an abstract artist. And then that became an intense, uh, this is 1949, 1950, the art scene uh, seemed to be monolithic and involved with total abstraction, with some exceptions, but that was... Uh, and also there was a sense that the art world was made up, uh, was linear, so that um, you had to succeed, follow somebody else who had done one thing, you had to expand or revolt against that and do the next thing, and there was this kind of linear quality to everything, so... Actually, I got caught up in that as well. And uh, I don't know, maybe that's still true, but I don't think so. Not in uh, that same kind of narrow sense. There was uh, evolution. And when I came back to America, it was 1959, 10 years after I'd been living in Paris and working there. I, I had already started making films and quit painting, but I fell in with... Uh, a bunch of artists in New York, and that was uh, the days of, uh, well, just preceding pop art. And so I, I, I had a show, maybe a show every year there, and uh, in a small gallery. It wasn't one of the most prestigious ones. And uh, in any case, that's how I hooked up with uh, artists such as Rauschenberg. Uh, if you saw my other films, there's one which I, I participated in one of his theater pieces, and he bought a bunch of my paint, uh, my uh, sculptures that were motorized in those days. Anyhow, so I fell in with that group of artists. It was a small uh, group downtown Manhattan just before uh, pop art scene exploded in terms of commercial became commercial. So Roy Lichtenstein was teaching in uh, New Jersey, and and uh, he all of a sudden bought a fancy car and drove out to the end of Long Island, where he stayed the rest of his life. And uh, uh, other artists were picked up like that. Jimmy Dunn started the pop art scene by being invited up town to uh, with his paintings of plumbing and things. His father was a plumber. And that was the, somebody, it hadn't been declared as pop art yet, but uh, anyhow. 